Okay, we're back with Rabbi Schneier and Imam Ali, the authors of Sons of Abraham, a candid conversation about the issues that divide and unite Jews and Muslims. Rabbi Schneier, um, when we left, uh, Imam Ali, you know, brought up the elephant in the room, <laughs> you know, the Israel-Palestinian situation, and indeed the sort of general state of the Middle East conflict. And, you know, I think the Imam brings up a very good point that you know, that this conflict isn't necessarily the thing that does or even should divide Muslims and Jews, uh, particularly in the United States, but it still does. It is kind of an obstacle. What is your suggestion for those communities of Jews and Muslims who want to come together, who want to share these experiences of the things that unite them, but who just don't, can't seem to get past, you know, this, this one thing? What, what do you suggest? Well, first, there are a host of issues that transcend this conflict, particularly when it comes to the different traditions and rituals that unite us. You know, as the Imam had referenced before, when I often speak about the common faith and the common fate and how our single destiny must strengthen our bonds of concern, compassion, and caring for each other. But when it comes to the Middle East conflict, particularly the conflict between Israel and Palestinians, that's where we are trying to make a unique contribution. Mm -hmm. We have spoken about this publicly. I've spoken before many, many Jewish audiences in terms of what is our vision and our perspective. Not if, but when the Israelis and Palestinians arrive at a peace agreement the question is, how will that understanding, how will that agreement be implemented? How will it be executed when a majority of Muslims don't trust Jews and a majority of Jews don't trust Muslims? And the reason for that mistrust is the lack of understanding or the misperceptions of what our respective sacred texts have to say about the other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a Jew, if I'm to believe that the Quran speaks disparagingly about my people, about Christians, about non-Muslims, how can I possibly trust the Muslim community? As a Muslim, if you believe that the Torah, the Bible, speaks of the chosen people, and you define that concept of as the Jewish people being superior, being better, how can you possibly, possibly then trust the Jewish people? Mm. So these are the issues that we tackle, that we address in this book. We're trying to build a foundation of trust as the political leadership of Israel and the Palestinians are working on the political peace process, we are focusing on the spiritual yeah. peace process. And thank God our work today is now in 35 countries across six continents. And what is also unique and distinctive about our work, our work is not about dialogue. It's about fighting for the other. Mm. It's about Muslims speaking out Very good. against anti-Semitism, Holocaust denial. It's about Jews speaking out against Islamophobia and anti-Muslim bigotry. I, I often say that a people who fight for their own rights are only as honorable as when they fight for the rights of all people. The very, very core, the very basis, the very foundation of our work is about fighting for the other, standing up for the other, and we have embarked on this journey of trying to share a new model, a new paradigm of Muslim-Jewish cooperation that hopefully more and more members of both faith communities will embrace and will join us along this journey. I think what you're saying is so absolutely important and right on. I mean, I think that, you know, not just this book, but your experiences and the experiences of most Muslims and Jews um, in this country 
uh, belie the fundamental fact that it requires the, the building of relationships among these communities and most importantly the the acknowledgement of each other's grievances the acknowledgement of the of the situations that the other is going through and standing up for one another you're absolutely right I, I one last question here I mean obviously the the foundation for ethnic understanding is is a global uh, foundation as you say there are 35 other countries in which the kinds of work that you're doing here is is being done but I still wonder whether this kind of unique bond that the two of you have established and this work that has come out of it, is there something uniquely American about that? Or do you feel as though uh, this is something that can be replicated in other parts of the world, parts of the world that perhaps don't have the level of religious diversity that the United States does? Well, it is uniquely American to engage in bridge building. It is uniquely American to build alliances with other ethnicities, with other faith communities. It is a model that the Imam and I are looking to export mm. to other countries around the world. And we've been very, very successful. At the same time, I'm not going to sit here and represent to you and to your viewers that we have arrived at the promised land of a Muslim-Jewish reconciliation. But I would also remind you and your viewers that in the Bible it took the Israelites 40 years to get to the Promised Land. Now, the truth is, and, and our reality, is that we have made some wonderful strides along this journey. And we may not have arrived at the Promised Land, but the good news is that the journey has begun. And if you contrast where we are today in the state of Muslim-Jewish relations as to where we were five years ago, yes. ten years ago, you see that the journey has really yes. uh, made its impact in some small way. We are trying to make a difference, and we invite more and more people uh, to accompany us as we go on the journey to the promised land of a Muslim-Jewish reconciliation. Imam Ali, what do you um, have to say to your fellow Muslims in the U.S. and um, around the world? Um, you know, what 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 is the best advice that you could give them in trying to get a better, more complete, more honest um, understanding of their Jewish brothers and sisters? You know, first of all, we have to remind them that uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters is our family, and uh, within the family, always there's a disagreement as a family members, brothers or sisters or father and mother. Always there's some disagreements, but we are brothers and sisters. And so brotherhood and sisterhood, I think, must be the, 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 the ground of these connections. Uh, but coming back to the point that you asked earlier, uh, I think it reminds us about uh, Ishmael in Mecca. Mm. It reminds us about Hagar in Mecca. It started from two individuals and it developed and becomes a bigger nation uh, uh, today. And, and it, it began with the prayer of Abraham, uh, sent unto them a messenger. And so I think, you know, well, we are now a, a, a lesser messengers of peace uh, to our respective communities. And I consider myself probably a, a lesser messenger to my community to tell them mm -hmm. about our Jewish brothers and sisters. Yes. You know, Elsa Weisschneier is a messenger to his community to tell them about the Muslim people. Well, I think that what you guys are doing is remarkable, and I, I really do feel that this kind of slow, steady relationship building, it really holds the key to getting to the promised land, as Rabbi Schneier said. The book is called Sons of Abraham, a candid conversation about the issues that divide and unite Jews and Muslims. Uh, our guests today are the authors, Rabbi Mark Schneier and Imam Shamsi Ali. Thank you both for joining us, and thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you so much.